God is good. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness, for being so, so good to us. Not because we are good, Lord Jesus, but because you are good. You're a good, good Father, Lord. I love you so much.
everyone. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to IES Encounter. My name is Vinska, and I'm so glad that you are here today with us. Before we start worshiping, let's read the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh my, welcome I is in Canada family, I think there's so much happiness in this place, God is here, amen, so we are going to celebrate God's goodness and His faithfulness in our life, and um, I do really miss face-to-face -face meetings, so I wish that you could see what's happening here at the studio, at our church, actually, if people are standing up, they just, you know, um, getting ready to praise Him. So we're gonna do this together, whatever you are, you can stand up, definitely you can clap your hand, you can um, scream as loud as you can. So just praise Him together. And then, I know this is old school, but we wanna do, uh, do this together. If I say, God is good, you say. And if I say all the time, you say. Let's try it then one more time, all right? God is good. And all the time. Let's praise Him together! He's good!
you are so good. Amen. good he's good all the time through all the storms in our life so I want you to sing together with me this song and have faith in him that everything is going to be okay all the storms in your life it's gonna be okay will you sing together with me
Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, the, the creator of everything. You create every single thing in our lives. And, and Jireh means that the Lord will provide everything that we need. So right now, if, if you feel that you've been praying for a provision in your life, I'm praying for you right here, right now, that God will answer that prayer and he will provide for you everything that you need according to his will so Jesus you are Jireh and you are more than enough so let us declare that with this song and say that Jesus when we have you we have everything that we need hallelujah let's sing this song together be more love than I am right now wasn't holding you up so there's nothing I can do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more love than I am right now going through a storm but I won't go down I hear your voice Carried in the rhythm of the way To let you out You would cross an ocean So I wouldn't drown You've never been closer than you are right now Cause you are a child So clear what is all about. Stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't wanna forget how I feel right now. You are Jire, you are enough. You are Jire, you are enough.
How's it going, ISPM? My name is Jonathan, and I'll be bringing you the announcements for today. If you are here for the first time, we hope you feel welcome, and be sure to click the New Here button located at the top right of your desktop screen. Or you can simply head over to Live Chat, and there is going to be a pop-up Connect button that allows us to connect with you. Once you've completed the form, our team will reach out to you. I do believe words have power. So I strongly encourage you to head over to live chat and just drop a word of encouragement for one another. Or you can just simply write happy Sunday. You'll never know, maybe your happy Sunday will make someone's day. And as usual, there is going to be an after service Zoom hangout session and the link will be posted towards the end of the service. Throughout the week, we've got a couple activities lined up for you and one of them is live group. 
If you've been looking for a community where you can have a discussion about God or just do life together, it might be the answer you've been looking for. We've got two life groups, Tuesday and Wednesday, and I'm sure the details will be up on the screen. If you want to know more about our upcoming activities, you can head over to our social media at IES Encounter. That's all of the announcements for today. Our hope and prayer are that you will be encouraged, empowered, and closer to Him than ever before. Happy Sunday and God bless. Hi, I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you so much, Pastor Anthony, for inviting me to come and share here at Encounter. It's just always so much fun to be with you guys. Um, I was wondering, have any of you ever had that like time when you're reading through the scripture? And so you're just reading through and all of a sudden, like a passage or a verse just jumps out at you. Um, it's like what one of my favorite speakers says, it's like a divine highlighter, just highlights the verse and it jumps out and it grips your heart. You know, I was um, in my Bible plan. I'm reading through the book of Acts. And last week I got to Acts chapter 19. And as I was reading it, I, I had read this chapter many times before, but as I read it this time, it just hit me in a different way. And so today I just want to share um, some lessons that I have learned and what I feel like God spoke to me through this passage. So I'm going to read from Acts chapter 19. We're going to start at verse 8 and go through verse 20. Let's read together. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that he touched uh, were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews went around driving evil spirits, tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the Lord Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all, and he gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. And this is where we're going to focus on today. But many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drops. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Before we continue, would you just join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you that you are alive and that you want to speak to us. Lord, I pray that you would just communicate through um, these lessons. Would we hear not my words, but would you directly speak? Lord, let it be your voice and your truth that we receive. In your name, amen. Awesome. I have read through the book of Acts so many times. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. I love the stories of the apostles and, and how God used them in different ways. And, and you read the beginning of this passage and you see Paul in Ephesus and there's like some crazy things going on. But by the time we get down to verse 17 and 18, we see that Jesus is speaking, or Jesus, sorry, the passage is speaking about believers. So it says many of those who believed. So just from the outset, I want to say like, so the lessons that I've drawn are for believers. And one of the things that I noticed as I read this passage is that the believers in this section seemed to have Jesus in one hand, but their sorcery and magic amulets in the other. They had accepted Christ, they had come to faith, 
Paul had been speaking in Ephesus for about two years. And so the people he's talking to had come to faith. They knew Jesus. They were probably gathering and, and listening to their equivalent of what church would have been. But after this moment where they saw the seven sons of Sceva and this powerful work of the Holy Spirit, they realized that how we're living with Jesus in one hand and this old way of living in the other, that's not the way forward. You know, it's easy to judge them at first glance. You know, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Why wouldn't you get rid of all of these old things of your former life? The thing is, is that in Ephesus, it was a place where magic and sorcery brought influence, it brought money, it brought power. So let's just say they started to follow Jesus and maybe they didn't even use these articles anymore. So maybe they had like, they put their magic scrolls and their amulets in this like back cupboard and we're like, well, you know, I'm not really using them. And they're, they're following Jesus, but they didn't get rid of them. And as I was thinking about it, I'm like, I bet all of us who are following Jesus, or maybe a lot of us, we, we follow Jesus. We love God. We're in church. We are maybe even in life group or soap group. But maybe it's Jesus and something else. Where you're, where you're holding on to Jesus in one hand, but there's something else in your other hand. It could be a mindset. It could be... Um, things from your old life. And we see that these things that these early disciples brought to this bonfire, they were of value. So I was like looking in several commentaries. I'm like, okay, so like 50 um, drachmas, 50,000 drachmas, like what does that even mean? And so in a variety of different commentaries, it says it's between two and six million dollars. That's a lot of dollars to just like toss into this giant bonfire. It was a sacrifice. When they said, you know what? We don't want it to just be Jesus and something else. We want to just follow Jesus. They sacrificed to put it all in. You know, these magic stuff that they had, it, it probably was connected to their family. They might've had it for generations. And, and I was thinking sometimes, our thinking patterns or our old way of living sometimes is generational. You know, our way of thinking about ourselves, about our value, about how we matter only if we do certain things or we have to live or do certain things or, or have certain substances to be of value. That maybe it's not in the front of our minds, but we're still holding on to it. I just think it's so incredible that they saw the value in just following Jesus. The second thing we see is that they didn't just acknowledge that they had their stock in something Jesus and something else. They acknowledged the fact that, hey, we are following Jesus and something else. They took action. They had to decide. They had this moment. Is it going to be Jesus and magic or is it just going to be Jesus? For us today, is it going to be Jesus and fill in your own blank or just Jesus? They made the choice and then they acted. What I love about um, these believers in Ephesus was that they took active action. Can you imagine like what it would have been like. So these people saw like this crazy display of the Holy Spirit. They're like, okay, these things that we had in our back cupboard, it's our backup plan. And we don't want to have a backup plan anymore. We just want it to be Jesus. So they bring all these things and they gather it and they have this giant bonfire. Like, can you imagine burning up two to six million dollars worth of stuff? Like, that's a lot, right? They didn't sell it and then give the money to the church or, or sell them and, and give the money to the poor. They knew 
that anything that's not Jesus and anything that takes people farther from Jesus is not worth profiting from. It was Jesus or nothing. It was Jesus or nothing. And you know, so maybe you're listening to me and you're like, Katie, like that's great and all, but like, I don't worship magic. I don't have amulets or magic scrolls. So what in the world does this passage have to do with me? Well, I want you to take a minute and I want you to think through where you're at right now. And you don't have to share this with anyone. It's just between you and Jesus. But think through it in your life. If it comes down to it, how would you fill in the blank? Jesus and what? Jesus and approval. Jesus and acceptance. Jesus and my job. Jesus and what? You know, a lot of us, we want to follow God. We want to follow Jesus, but it's really hard to let go of our backup plan, to let go of what has been a part of us for so long. You know, sometimes I think it's easier if it's physical things that we have to get rid of, but mindsets are hard to get rid of. I know for me, people pleasing and and relying on what humans think of me instead of just what Jesus thinks is something that has been my Jesus and that I've needed to give up. So as you think about your Jesus and what, what would that be? What is your backup plan? What are you leaning on instead of just Now, if we were together in person, I would have everybody have a sheet of paper and a pen in your chair, but we are not together in person. We are on YouTube and online church, but everyone should have some sort of device. So I want you to take a minute and I want you to pull up a note or um, grab a sheet of paper or a napkin or something next to you. And I want you to write out your Jesus and blank. And this isn't to share, This isn't for you to type it in the chat, so don't type it in the chat, right? Like just write it down because you know, truth comes in the light. Freedom comes in the light. Shame stays in the dark. And it's easy to just hide things and put them in a back cupboard, either physically or mentally. I believe that Jesus wants to level up our faith. He wants us to not just be okay with one hand. He wants us to have both hands following him. But to do that, you have to acknowledge what it is that you're holding in your second hand. What is it that you are clinging to? So just take a minute and write it down. You know, it's hard. It's really hard to be real. You know, we we live in a world where it's easy to pretend and it's easy to use filters, not just social media filters, but we post and we share and we talk about what we like. And I think more than ever, Jesus wants us to be real, 10 honest, 10 out of 10 honest with him because it's when we're real, it's when we're vulnerable, it's when we really tell him where we're at that he can move in a powerful way. What I love about the passage is that, so they burned these things, these articles that had been their backup plan. And it says the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. When we release, what we had been clinging to, when we release our backup plan, when we say, you know what? This stuff doesn't matter. It's Jesus or nothing. It's not even just about us. Yes, we get to experience new freedom and we get to experience more of God than ever before. 
but it's also a testimony to other people is they see that person is all in and they ask questions. Your love and your dedication to God is a testimony that can bring other people to faith. So I want you to um, just write that down or if you have it, would you just hold it in your hand? And I just wanna pray for us that we would release whatever it is that we are holding. So if you would just take it, I would just like to pray for us. Lord, I thank you that you are working. God, I thank you that you are enough. Lord, I thank you for each person that has brought into the light something that they've been holding on to that needs to be released for them to go to the next level of faith. Lord, I just pray for courage and boldness. Lord, I pray for those who have written down mindset issues, God, that have been clinging to them. Lord, I just pray for freedom and release. Lord, I pray for um, anyone who is holding a physical object or um, anything that's tangible. Lord, would you just help them let it go? Lord, I pray for toxic anything in their lives. Lord, would you just help them release it? Lord, I pray for new freedom. I pray for new levels of faith. Lord, would you just burn up anything that hinders them from fully following you? Lord, would you take us individually and as a community to the next level of faith in your name amen god wants to take you to the next level of faith you are already saved you're already in the family but there is more that you can have more power more love more freedom but to get that you have to release and so i hope that you have been challenged and encouraged um, by today and, and by this passage in Acts. And um, it has been wonderful to share with you. Thank you so much again, Pastor Anthony and the Encounter team for letting me share it with you. God bless. Thank you so much, Pastor Katie, for speaking God's word to all of us today. Indeed, God wants us to experience more of him. He wants us to level up and he wants us to go all in so that we can receive all that God has for us. Amen? Immediately after the benediction, we will host a Zoom hangout. So come and drop by and meet the Encounter family. God bless you all. Have a blessed week ahead and receive the blessing of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus, and go with the fellowship and the anointing of the Holy Spirit.
Yo! 